Hi, this is Griffiths Electrodynamics, problem 4.10. I'm going to be dealing with a sphere of dielectric something. Of course, it has a radius of big R, as always. And <coughs> this sphere has a uh, polarization built in, that is, is this uh, constant K multiplied by this vector R, which is, of course, just the vector from the center. So what does this polarization look like? Well, it um, it just is pointed outward in all directions uh, from the center of the sphere, just like the, the vector r. And it's multiplied by this constant k. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it gets stronger the further you go out as this, this r gets larger. Um, so what we're going to be doing is finding the bound surface charge and the bound volume charge due to this built-in polarization. Go ahead and write big P there. Okay, so uh, the formula, let's just start with surface charge. Uh, the formula for uh, bound surface charge is the polarization dotted into the uh, unit normal vector. And in this case, uh, because we're, we have spherical symmetry here, our normal vector and hat, right, is just pointing outwards at all points um, on the surface of this sphere. And that is just equal to our hat. Unit vector pointing outwards at all points on the surface of the sphere. So let's go ahead and find our bound surface charge. Shouldn't be too difficult. We just take our polarization right here. I'm going to go ahead and write this uh, r vector as um, the magnitude r multiplied by the unit r hat vector. And then we're just dotting this into n hat, which in this case is just r hat. All right, so the r hat dotted with itself is, of course, 1. And our surface charge density, the bound surface charge density, <coughs> excuse me, is just equal to kr. I guess what I should write here is uh, big R, because since we're at the surface of the sphere, the magnitude of this vector here um, is big R. So let's go ahead and write that. Big R. All right, now let's find the, the uh, bound charge volume density. Go ahead and put this in a box so we remember where we put it. Uh, the bound charge uh, volume density is equal to the uh, minus the uh, divergence of our polarization. All right, so just written like this. And we are going to be using spherical coordinates. Um, our polarization only has the R component. Let me just go ahead and write this as K R R hat just the form that we already used up here. So um, you can see that our polarization only has the R component. There's no theta, there's no phi, only the R. So in that case, this divergence, we'll go ahead and bring the minus sign out here. This divergence is written, we're, we're only taking the R term. Um, so one over R squared, and then we have the partial derivative with respect to r of r squared multiplied by the r component of, in this case, p, our polarization, which in our case is given by this right here. So we can just write kr. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, this constant can come out front. I'm, let's, let's, uh, all right, 
we'll, we'll do one more line here and then we'll, we'll move on to a new page. So I'm bringing this constant k out front. I have this little uh, tiny, this r squared. I'm going to write it like this because this is just getting too small. And then we have a partial derivative with respect to r of uh, just the r's are left over, so we just have an r cubed. All right, now that's kind of written confusingly because we were at the very bottom of a page. So let's go ahead and write it out nice and big at the top of the next page. We have our minus sign. We have our r squared on the bottom. And then we have the partial derivative uh, with respect to r of just r cubed. So that gives us a 3r squared inside. OK. So of course, uh, these r squareds are going to divide out. And we just end up with a minus 3k. So this tells us uh, the volume bound charge density here. Now uh, we will, let's go ahead and put a box around this, even though it's kind of awkward with all that stuff in there. Now we're going to look at the electric field on the inside and on the outside. Um, this is just a Gauss's law uh, problem, right? So if we take the the uh, surface integral of uh, our electric field dotted into this uh, with this infinitesimal surface element here and integrate over the entire Gaussian surface, we are going to get the total charge enclosed divided by the permittivity of free space. <coughs> so uh, for our spherical symmetry, uh, we know that uh, just looking at the magnitudes, we we get a uh, a four. Oh, gee, right four here, four pi r squared. Uh, we're still on the inside of the of the of our circle. So here's our Gaussian surface right here, inside the inside our sphere, and th that is just out a radius of small r. So this is a 4 pi small r squared. We haven't passed the outer edge of the of the sphere where um, where the next r would would be a large r. Never mind, we'll just write it out. That's a bit confusing. Let me bring our 1 over epsilon naught out front and now we'll we'll deal with our q enclosed. Um, so we're dealing with a volume charge density here. Let's go ahead and write that out. So we're just multiplying a volume charge density by the volume to get the total charge. Here's the volume charge density, minus 3k. And then the volume of a sphere is 4, oh, I cannot write it for, 4 thirds pi r cubed. It's this r that would change to uh, to the big r once we pass the outer um, edge of our of our sphere, once we once we pass the surface of our sphere, but we're still on the inside. This R stays small. Anyway, um, so these threes are going to cancel out. Uh, we can divide these fours out. We can divide out the pies. Uh, let's divide out. Um, we have an R squared here. And let's go and divide out with two of those. What do we have left over? We have an E on this side. And we'll have a minus. We have one R left. We have a K. So here's a K. Here's an R. And we still have our permittivity of free space. OK. <laughs> and this is just the magnitude of the electric field. Um, we know from our experience with Gauss's law with, uh, with spheres that uh, the direction of this, when we express it as, as a vector, will be the r hat direction. Let's go ahead and we'll just call this 
we'll just write in at the bottom to remind us that this is the <laughs> excuse me. This is the electric field on the inside of, of our little sphere. All right. So we have one part left, and that is finding the electric field for the outside. Um, it's the same sort of process here. Closed charge. We've got our permittivity free space. It's just Gauss's law as before. Uh, our Gaussian surface will still have the small r in it. 4 pi small r squared. And now we come to uh, the kicker, which is finding the total enclosed charge. If we were just dealing with the volume charge density, then, like we mentioned before, we would just put a big R here and then solve for that. Um, but now, once we pass the surface of this sphere, we not only have to deal with the volume charge density, we also have to deal with the, the surface charge density, bound charge, right? So let's go ahead and calculate the total charge enclosed. So first let's do the volume charge. We've already done this. We take the volume charge multiplied by, or the, the volume charge density multiplied by the volume will give us the total volume charge. So here's the volume charge density, minus 3k, multiplied by the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Oh. And here's where we put in our big R, right? Because once we, once we pass the edge of the sphere, we've enclosed the entire sphere, and we don't keep adding on charge once we, once we go past. So the total amount of bound charge um, is it's all contained within this sphere. So yeah, we have our big R here. All right, now we are going to do the same with the surface charge density. So we need to add in the total surface charge, which is just the surface charge density, K big R, multiplied by the total surface area, which is four pi big R squared, the surface area of a sphere. Let's go ahead and work these out. Well, we see that this 3 will divide with this 3, and that's about all that cleans up right away. So what we have left over is a minus 4 pi big R cubed, and then this piece gives us a plus 4 pi. Oh, there's a k in here too, right, this k. <laughs> 4 pi big R, I just wrote a b big R cubed K. That's an R. All right. The punchline is that these are the same. 4 pi big R cubed K, four, minus 4 pi big R cubed K. And they subtract out to 0. Therefore, the magnitude of our electric field is 0 and our, our electric field is zero once we get to the outside, which makes sense because um, our, our, uh, our sphere is just polarized, it's not charged. There's no net charge, it's net neutral. So uh, once, we, once we get out uh, past the outside, um, just using Gauss's law, um, you know, I, I guess that's not necessarily obvious because, you know, uh, there could be some sort of electric field that averages out to zero. But yeah, in this case, however, because our polarization is radial, I'm pretty sure this is why this happens. You know, our polarization is radial in all dimension, uh, in, in all directions. Uh, so. 
therefore it's the same the electric because of symmetry the the electric field will be the same uh, everywhere outside um, and so if it averages to zero and it's the same everywhere then it's zero everywhere so <coughs> so anyway there we there we have it our electric field on the outside is given by is it's just zero and our electric field on the inside scrambling around here's the electric field on the inside you can see that it just um, what it, it points inward and it increases as uh, linearly with small r here as we move out from the center of the sphere but yeah once we, once we pass big R, then the surface charge density enters the equation and cancels the whole thing out. So there we go. Great.